Good afternoon, it's Jeff and Wilma here at Budroom and this afternoon we're going to talk about snake beans. I just want to talk about the many advantages of growing snake beans. Um, the only disadvantage uh, is that they don't grow in the winter time, so that's the only disadvantage. But compared to uh, bush beans, um, there's so many advantages. Uh, with the bush beans you've got to bend over to, to harvest them and you, you've got to grow them in rows. Uh, whereas with the with the snake beans, you only grow them a short row, and then they're going to climb. You, you make a trellis or an a, a frame or a, or a H frame, like we've done over the back there, and they'll just grow up there for you. Now I've got some uh, notes here written down, uh, so I've just covered that. My first note was uh, a small amount of room required, so I covered that. Uh, so you, you start growing these in the spring and you just keep on going until you know, autumn, I guess, and you, you want to grow a little patch every six weeks. So, uh, so we've got four, four little patches here now. Uh, now my second point is uh, very little bending over, which is true. Uh, with, your, with your bush beans, you, uh, you're bending over to harvest them, you've got to lift the uh, bush up to look for the beans, uh, so you're disturbing the bush and sometimes you break the, the bush to get the beans and you, you often you miss them and they get a bit too mature. Uh, now the third point of it is uh, they, seem to, they seem to be resistant to mites and other pests. Well that's, I found that to be true. We've only been growing these for two years and um, uh, just uh, at the end of spring, at, during spring last year, 2010, um, we had some Borlotti beans growing right alongside these, and the Borlotti beans got devastated by uh, the mites, and so I had to pull them out. And uh, same thing with the Pinto beans; they uh, got both got devastated by the mites, whereas the snake beans survived pretty well. And we haven't noticed any other pests on these either. So the fourth point I've got here, uh, they're not laying down on the ground, so bush beans, so uh, with your bush beans quite often the beans are close to the ground and then your grubs and caterpillars will come up and eat half the bean and chew big holes in them and that sort of thing. So we haven't got any of that with the snake beans. Um, so the beauty of the uh, snake beans is they're so easy to harvest. You just walk around, uh, just pick them off the, off the bush. I picked these earlier this afternoon and I got equal amount yesterday and the day before. And, um, and because we're not using any pesticides or any um, sprays, uh, when you pick the bean, it's ready to, to cut up and put straight in the pot. So there's no cleaning or anything like that. And uh, yeah, the next thing is great with any dish. Well, that's true. They're, they're great with any dish. You can we put them in everything that we're cooking, don't we, Wilma? Uh, yes, we do. We had some mm. uh, fritters that Wilma made for lunch, and she put some uh, snake beans in them, and uh, really made it nice. And uh, the other point I've got here: uh, once you have, well. Uh, once you've got the seeds, you never have to uh, buy seeds again. So what you, all you do is you earmark one or two um, of the beans for seeds, and then you just don't harvest them, and then you've got your um, your seeds for the next crop. Uh, quite often you you'll miss a bean or two when you're harvesting, and uh, so it'll. So you'll find it'll be next time you come around it'll be too mature to pick, so you can use that one for seeds. Uh, with the fourth crop that we grew this year, um, we we had some beans out of the first lot that I earmarked for seeds, and um, anyway we had a big mass of rain around Christmas time, and they just got saturated, and all the seeds sprouted inside the pot. So I just pulled all the seeds out and planted them, and that was that was our fourth row. <laughs> so that's pretty good going. So but the next one, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, the ne uh, next point I got here is that they're so easy to grow. So even for somebody just starting off, 
uh, growing a veggie garden. But it's so easy to grow. Uh, there's, there's little to it. You just uh, get your seeds up when they get maybe about uh, eight, 8 inches high or 9 inches high and they just start to grow those runners. All you've got to do is just make your trellis or, or your A-frame or whatever you're going to get them to grow on and, um, and then away you go. So all, all we do with these, we use um, uh, liquid fertiliser with that uh, fish and kelp and we use blood and bone. We just give them a side dressing of blood and bone and put a bit of sugar cane mulch on top of that and um, just water them in with a bit of liquid fertiliser now and again and uh, away you go and you've got these beautiful snake beans all, all coming off. Uh, so, uh, show you. Oh, yeah, my last point I wanted to uh, point out is they seem to be able to tolerate a fair bit of shade. So, so that's, a, that's a good point. You know, like, I think these are doing better in full sun. But our first lot that we grew was in was basically all shade, and we still got a good few feeds off then. But the only thing is, they had all that rain, so that sort of uh, upset things a little bit. But, but uh, so that's about it. So anyway, so I think uh, you can't you can't blame me for being excited about these snake beans. Can you warm them? Like it's no, you haven't same. talked about the beautiful flavour and flavor. how yeah. tender they are. They are, yeah, and stringless, basically mm. stringless. Yeah, they're um, easy to prepare. The chap who gave us the seeds, uh, he just raves about them. and he, he just lives in a retirement village and he has a very limited amount of room and he just grows a, a, a small amount every few weeks and that keeps him and his wife going and... Uh, so, so you don't need much room for these snake beans, and uh, so we didn't even buy the seeds. This chap gave us the seeds, and <coughs> so you just got the seeds um, forever and a day, as long as you, uh, yeah, sort of harvest your seeds. And so that's the beauty of um, growing your own veggies. Uh, keep the cost down, and uh, you know, because I think these could be up around eight dollars a kilo in the shops, or maybe not that dear, but yeah. Anyway, well, uh, thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll catch you later. All the best. Bye.